Stephen Harford did not even have the respect to directly tell us, the people of Canada, that he had decided to suspend democracy. Furthermore, the government announced prorogation on the very day that five Canadians were killed in Afghanistan and in the very same hour that the men's Olympic hockey team was named. Why prorogue on this day? Well, Stephen Harper thought that you wouldn't notice. Stephen Harper thought that you would be too distracted and that you wouldn't care. He said those very words, Canadians do not care about prorogation. Well, I'm looking at this crowd and I see people from Picton, Tweed, Marmara, Maydock, Bancroft, and of course Belleville. Newburgh, apparently. <laughs> I see friends, colleagues, and perfect strangers, not only from Hastings and Prince Edward County, but from our neighbors from Northumberland and Quinney West, Lennox and Addington. We have received phone calls, emails, Facebook messages, and I am convinced Canadians do care. Cap yeah. started as a Facebook group created by a university student in Alberta. The group grew and grew and kept growing. I remember staying up very late one night two weeks ago to watch that group hit the 100,000 member mark. My friends, there are over 211,000 members of the Canadians Against Proroguing Parliament group. It is by far the largest Canadian political Facebook group with more members than any federal political party in Canada. Cap's great Facebook success inspired a young woman named Shiloh Davis to take on the task of coordinating what we hoped would be a dozen rallies held simultaneously today, January 23rd, the fourth anniversary of Harper's coming to power. In just three weeks, ordinary Canadians like ourselves have organized over 50 rallies. Being held right now across the country from St. John's to Victoria, as far north as Yellowknife, from Smithers, British Columbia, to Wolfville, Nova Scotia, and in places where expatriate Canadians live and work, in London, England, in New York City, Dallas, Texas, and if you can believe it, a one-woman protest in Oman, in the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. organizers are not politicians. We are officially non-partisan. We are not paid for our work. We are the ordinary Canadians that Stephen Harper claims to understand so well. And we have been joined by all of you here today and across the land, those ordinary Canadians who believe that in a democracy, the government works for us. And right now, the government is doing only part of its job. I was listening to the radio the other day, and Daryl Cramp, conservative member of parliament for Prince Edward Hastings, said that opponents of prorogation do not understand the, quote, real work of an MP. <laughs> well, good question. Well, I'm no expert, but according to the House of Commons website, a member of parliament works in the chamber, in committee, in caucus, and in both Ottawa and constituency offices. So I guess I do understand the real work of an MP. And, there you go. And if an MP is not working in the chamber, and not working in committee. I have to wonder, does Daryl Cramp understand the real work of an MP? Now many of you have already contacted Mr. Cramp with your concerns and objections to prorogation. I can only assume that he is too busy doing part of his job to answer everyone personally because he has posted a generic letter to all of us on his website in which he claims that prorogation is necessary to give the government, and I quote, time to consult with Canadians recalibrate its agenda, and set new priorities. To my mind is, to, to, to my mind the obvious question is this. If prorogation is necessary so that Mr. Cram has time to consult with Canadians, was he not consulting with us while Parliament was in session? So what does recalibrating its agenda mean anyway? The phrase, to my mind, is pure spin doctor nonsense. And I think it says a lot about this government's old priorities if they need an extended holiday to set new ones. Personally, I'm losing track of the various excuses given by the Prime Minister and his government to justify this. One Conservative MP suggested it would give members the opportunity to attend the, the Olympics. 
I don't know about you, but I wouldn't mind attending the Olympics myself. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't prorogue the rest of my life or the cost of the tickets. Mr. Harper said in an interview that prorogation was needed to consult with Canadians about the next budget. Curiously, only a few days after the Prime Minister made this statement, Mr. Cramp announced on his website that he was finished with extensive pre-budget consultations. So that rationale doesn't really work for me either. In the local media, Mr. Cramp has stated that he needs more time in writing because his constituency office is so busy. Well, it certainly is today. Yeah. Other MPs seem to manage just fine with their busy constituency offices because, in fact, these offices are run by staff members, whether the MP is in writing or not. Excuses, excuses, excuses. What I am hearing, what I am seeing here today, is that the Canadian voter understands precisely why China was a career. We know that the government did not want to answer questions before the Special Committee on Afghanistan because even before prorogation, Conservative members were skipping meetings of that committee. Prorogation also allows the government to gain control of Senate committees after Stephen Harper appoints new senators to vacant seats. This is within his rights as a Prime Minister. It's not illegal. But the manner is unethical. And Canadians, having suffered through a tough recession, simply have no time for Harper's obvious political game plan, especially given the cost of Canadian taxpayers for his followers. It is estimated that the combined House and Senate costs during prorogation, minus MP and Senator salaries, is $48,774,000. At a time when most Canadians are suffering financially, it is a bitter pill to know that it costs 50 million bucks for Parliament to not sit. Here's how I see it. Let's say you decided after Christmas you didn't want to go back to the office. Maybe December was a rough month. Maybe you argued with your co-workers. Maybe you weren't playing your A game. And you'd rather work from home for a bit. Just not show up to that board meeting or take that overnight shift. Yeah, well, we don't have that option. We would lose our jobs. So in that sense, we need here today to tell Mr. Plant and his colleagues that they had better do the whole job, all of it, the real work of MPs. Because in our great Canadian democracy, we the Canadian people are the bosses. We hire our MPs, and we can fire them. against prorogation, we are disappointed and dismayed by Mr. Cramp's persistent dismissals of our concerns. Our member of Parliament was quoted as saying that objection to prorogation is based on ignorance. Ignorance in my dictionary is defined as being uninformed or uneducated, lacking knowledge or information. Clearly, Mr. Cramp is suggesting that we are stupid. And we are so ignorant, again, of the real work of an MP that we ought not to question his peers and our Prime Minister's judgment. We say that first, no matter what the circumstance, it is wrong for a member of Parliament to refer to any constituent as ignorant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Second, yeah. we take issue with Mr. Cramp's implication that Canadians against the Roman Parliament is a tool of the opposition party. The press has reported that Mr. Cramp shrugged off our group as furthering a political agenda in a similar manner to previous conservative efforts online, which I think says a lot more about Mr. Cramp's party than about CAP. I can assure you that CAP is resolutely nonpartisan. We are not controlled by any political party, we have no formal leadership, we are locally organized, and we come in all political shapes and sizes. We are liberals, we Democrats, Greens, Independents, and yes, Mr. Cramp, I'm sorry to break it to you, but CAP has its fair share of conservative supporters. At least, past conservative supporters. But even if we are not as informed and knowledgeable as our MP, I think it's fair to say that 200 academics who signed an open letter published January 11th are anything but ignorant. In a comment that we published on Monday, Mark Walters, a professor of law at Queen's University, writes, I signed the letter because I agreed that the Prime Minister's decision to shut down Parliament until March was a nakedly partisan decision. 
Professor Walters is one of a half dozen academics from Queens and Kent universities who have written to Cap 50 